Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to have another last ditch effort, hopefully my last last ditch effort, to repair the Tektronix DSA 8200 digital serial analyzer that I've been working on for the past couple months now, I think. I, I don't know, I lost track. But here's the original motherboard that came out of it. Now I got a lot of helpful comments. Uh, one person commented that I should drill out the the via that the the mosfet was in the bad mosfet because i was measuring on the circuit board itself a resistance between gate and drain um the gate and drain traces on the circuit board and you know that's not good so i drilled out the via uh, to remove any potential solder bridges the resistance was still there so this uh, motherboard really is screwed I won't be able to use it anymore because that's definitely not going to work. So, um, some other people suggested that I replace the BIOS, and and I, I kind of, you know, wanted to do that in the first place, but they're right here. That's the BIOS pad. There is, there is no BIOS to speak of, not on this one or on the, um, the new motherboard that I put into the machine. There is, however, this chip right here, and it's labeled TPM and I looked it up and TPM stands for um, trusted platform module and that's the chip that has all the top secret encrypted um, proprietary st stuff that the Windows software looks for um, in order to authenticate this board as genuine Tektronix part. So what I'm going to try to do is unsolder this 28 pin package here and put this onto the other motherboard. I'll have to open up this thing all over again and get the motherboard out, but hopefully I can just swap the chip on the other one and we'll see if the Windows software likes it. So when I put this thing back together the first time I ended up with an extra screw and I think I finally found out where that goes right there in this hole. Uh, that's the, the galvanized steel plate that holds the, the hard drive and the, uh, and the uh, CD-ROM drive that I took out already. But it's not like, not like this thing actually needs another screw. There's already five other screws holding it in place. All right, here's the two boards. This is the original one, and this is the one, the newer one that I installed. And my surface mount soldering skills are not all that great, nor is my selection of surface mount soldering tools. So I'll be using heat gun here, you know, just this for heat shrink. Um, gonna preheat pre the board to about 100 degrees Celsius, and um, then I'll use under a soldering iron here with a wide tip on it. But of course, that gets way too hot if I plug it straight into 120. So I have it going into Variac here, tuned, tuned about 60 or 70 volts to get it to the right temperature. Oh. Uh oh. Oh shit. Oh man. I just lift a, lifted a pad and this is the circuit board that I don't want to break. Oh, I hope I can fix that. There's another pad lifted up there, but looks like it's still connected. So here's a close-up shot. There's, uh, there's one of the pads that lifted up a little bit, but that's not too bad. It's still attached to this nice thick trace going right to that via. The other one that I lifted up quite a bit is right here. And you can see it's just dangling by a very thin copper thread here. So I'm going to try to reinforce that by putting some solder on top of that copper. Well, I guess that's as good as I'm going to get. While I'm at it, I might as well put a little bit of extra solder on all the other pads here to... Wait a minute. Yeah. So I can prepare them for the uh, trusted platform module from the other motherboard. 
Uh oh, damn it. There we go. All right, this is the original Tektronix certified circuit board and I got the trusted platform module off of that one much more easily than I did the first one or at least without any damage to the traces, but that doesn't really matter. I'm going to put the chip onto the other motherboard and see how that goes. Looks like the one trace, the one lifted pad on the left side that Touching another one right next to it. See if I can split them apart here. All right. Put on a tiny bit more solder. And there it is one transplanted trusted platform module. Soldering job looks pretty good. It's a little offset, but I don't see any solder bridges anywhere, so I guess I'll plug it back into the DSA and give it a shot. All right, moment of truth again. Let's see what happens here. Oh, crap. I forgot the CMOS battery. Let me put that back in. All right, put that little lithium battery in there on the motherboard. I know it'll work without it, but if this does ultimately work 100%, then I don't want to take it apart again. I just want to let it go, put the covers back on and be done with it. This date time has not been set. No problem there. Let's try. Windows Professional XP. Oh, I didn't plug in the mother, I mean the uh, keyboard yet. Both gigs of RAM are still there. Copy of Windows must be activated. What is this? I gotta restart it. This is a keyboard and the mouse here are PS2 connection. That's not gonna work. Oh dear, I don't wanna see this. Yeah, this is all the same crap as before. I guess that little transplant didn't work. Let me, I'm gonna to try to reload the Windows software in this thing and see if that'll help. First, I'm gonna try this activate Windows by phone thing and see if I can get it. I don't think it's gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Well, nope, that didn't work. But uh, anyway, by the way, for those of you who commented on calling up when calling up Microsoft to you know get activation codes or whatever, this is the Windows software that came with it. You can see it's it's specifically made for the Tektronix DSA 8200 and performance is the sole responsibility of Tektronix Incorporated. So if I, if I was to call Microsoft, they would just tell me to call Tektronix. All right, got Windows installed. Turn it on. Let's see what happens. Well, this is certainly different. I don't know if it's good or not. I don't know, it's doing something. I'm starting to feel good about this. What the hell? Oh, no wait, let's see. <gasps> no way, I think it works. <laughs> Sweet. Oh man, this is so cool. Clock starts in 2003. 
Wow, this is so sweet. Looks like everything's working. It's Windows. It's 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 up and running. 37 gig on the C drive. By the way, the resolution on this thing is real outdated. We're looking at 640 by 480. That's that's the resolution of the the pixels on the LCD. If I make it anything else, it's just gonna make the picture all blurry. Oh man, I think it works. Holy crap. All right, now I just gotta load up all the 8200 application software and then I'll have a digital serial analyzer up and running. All right, I may have partied a little too soon because Windows still wants to be validated even though it, it works fine and I can do stuff with Windows, it still needs um, some kind of you know connection or validation code to get itself validated. Uh, I hate this. There it is, bottom right hand corner that I'm sure you've seen that before. So here's the DSA software, measure stuff with it, whatever. Close that. This little icon right here, 24 days left for activation. This one right here. Validate genuine Windows license. Oh man. Of course, if I click on that little little keys icon there to validate Windows, we go to this thing. It's a little different than the one I had before. That's the same number I typed in before. Looks like I'm going to have to hook this up to a network and see if I can get it connected. Well, there it is. Finally got it up and running 100%. Windows is authenticated. All I had to do was type in the 25 character installation ID um, that you know you would usually type in when you first install Windows but since this is a non-standard version made specifically for the Tektronix equipment um, it never prompted me to type in that number during the installation so I had to really dig down and try to find out where I could do that but got it done and it works works beautifully now I've got the nice vortex space desktop background here really old school and then there's the uh, you know this application where I can actually measure stuff if I had anything plugged into the modules but uh, I'm not an expert in all that high frequency stuff so I'm gonna use this twenty thousand dollar piece of equipment with thirty thousand dollars worth of front end modules and thirty thousand dollars worth of application software to run a 1993 MS-DOS screensaver called Razdaz. Check that out. So basically when I first started out with this thing it seemed like a, a power supply problem because the power was constantly cycling. I found out that the, the problem was, was the motherboard and then I localized the problem even further to a bad MOSFET on the motherboard. So I, you know, I tried replacing that, didn't work, so replaced the whole motherboard. And then of course, and of course I ran into the trusted platform module problem. And um, you know, after I, you know, I got the new motherboard, I put it in, it should have worked. And that was, that was basically the end of the repair. After that, it was more like a hack in order to work around the software authentication uh, protocols that are internal to, to this thing. So I hope you enjoyed this little series. I hope you learned a lot. I know I learned a heck of a lot while doing this. And see you later.